Meet Casper, a fearless great Pyrenees from Decatur, Georgia, who made headlines both locally and worldwide for his incredible act of bravery. In the early morning hours of November 4th, Casper ignored his own safety and protected his owner's sheep by engaging in a fierce 30-minute battle with nearly a dozen coyotes, killing eight of them in the process. When it was all over, Casper was gravely injured. But the events that followed are a true example of loyalty, teamwork, and just how valuable this particular breed of dog can be when it comes to protecting one's livestock. In the days leading up to November 4th, something wasn't right. I guess you could say it was the calm before the storm, except there was nothing calm about them. No, in fact, they were very active. The week that, that this happened, um, that Monday, a neighbor said he had seen 13 at one time, which is a lot of coyotes, you know, like two and three is a normal thing. One and two is, is normal. Um, seeing 13 coyotes at one time, that was worrisome. Worrisome indeed, especially for John, owner of You Can Do It Naturally a Decatur-based landscaping company whose workforce includes some 90 sheep. On the night of the attack, only six were on the property. And according to John, Casper, as well as another dog, were relative newcomers. He had recently acquired the dogs as a test run to see if they could live up to the task of guarding his sheep. Well, Casper quickly proved his value. He just charged him, and I mean, it was, I think I, maybe 10 seconds, he had the first three dead, and. Um, methodically. Methodically, just one, two, three, bam, 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 they were dead. Courageous as it was, Casper's efforts came with a heavy price. When the 30-minute battle was over, most of the coyotes were dead, and Casper was nowhere to be found. Two days later, and badly wounded, he found his way home. The moment John laid eyes on him, he feared the worst. I thought we were going to put him down. I thought, I didn't think he'd make it another couple hours. He, he was terrible. It was everything badly infected, and he just had these huge wounds. I mean. Just one of them on his side was like this, and the one on his neck was like that, and I thought his, his one ear was torn off, but it was just matted back with blood, and um, you know, all the hair was gone, and his tail was, you know, missing about half his tail, and he wouldn't even let us get close to his tail. And so the first thing was clean him up enough to be able to assess, you know, do we take him to a vet or not? Ultimately, the decision was made to take Casper to a vet. Multiple surgeries would follow, but his long road to recovery was just beginning. So were the medical bills. That's when John turned to an old friend and an organization created for situations just like Casper's. I think 15, 16 days or so, he was, he was at the emergency vets. That's a lot of money. And, um, and then he went to Lifeline and you know, it's a spay-neuter clinic, right? But Dr. Dr. Susan Brosman, um, she and the team over there were just, they're just wonder workers. We didn't know what we were gonna expect um, coming in there and we are like, surely he's like half dead. Um, but he come in and he had this wound that was massive. But other than that, he was still in good spirits and you know, such a good boy. And how's this for an added bonus? Not only did Lifeline Animal Project assist with Casper's road to recovery, the group also launched a GoFundMe campaign to cover his medical bills. In total, they raised $15,000, more than the original goal. That extra money will now help save the life of another animal in the future. People will love a good story, if you will. And like, his story was just so like heroic in a sense. Because, I mean, he was saving the sheep, but 
he also, if you think about it, saved the risk of, of like the neighbors in the neighborhood and like that with that many coyotes, they normally don't travel in such a large pack like that. So with that many coyotes there, it could have put other animals at risk, other farms at risk, other people at risk. And so it's heroic in a sense. And so everyone loves a good heroic story. You know, we thought we were going to have to do skin grafts, all that, nope. none of that. And he's, you know, he moves around well and still loves to get dirty and loves to get cleaned. <laughs> and so um, just loves to lay there and watch things and, and pay attention to everything going on. He's, he's doing well. What does it say about these breed, this breed of, of how you know, just resilient and defensive they are when it comes to stuff like that. And, and, and not just, I mean, they're so loyal. They're, they're determined to stay with their animals. They are determined. We couldn't do our jobs without them because I can't be out with my sheep, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, but the dogs are, and the dogs make a lot of the decisions. If, if, you know, we try to coexist with coyotes, but you come across the fence and that's where coexistence ends especially for the coyotes, right? The, the, the dogs decide that's it. Um, and, and, and that's important, right? They, they take care of those, those threats. And it's not just coyotes. They, they chase hawks off. They chase owls off. They, um, they, they've, they, chase, all kind, they chase people off. Um, and, and they're important for that. They're just an incredibly important part of our business. And um, we, couldn't, we couldn't farm, especially doing urban shepherding, we couldn't do that without dogs. You know, I try to avoid using this term because it's so often overused, but it is an absolute miracle this dog is still with us. The way John Weirwold describes it, it was a very vicious, violent fight between Casper and the Coyotes, and huge props to all the doctors and technicians who helped save Casper's life, including everyone at Lifeline Animal Project. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the organization, maybe you're thinking about adopting a farm dog or you have a farm animal that needs attention, give them a call. Send them an email, the web address you see there, that is lifelineanimal.org.